Hello, my friends. Uh, so I'm here today to tell you about the product and the quotient rule. So here's the question that they allow you to answer is, what do we do if we have to take the derivatives of two functions which are multiplied or divided together? So if we have to take the derivative, this is a notation we'll use sometimes uh, of like two functions multiplied together like this. So when you see d by dx and some things in uh, parentheses, it just means take the derivative of this. So if you take the derivative of f of x times g of x, basically what you do is you do the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Now these two terms, uh, of course, are added together, so the order doesn't matter, so sometimes you'll see different orders, but this is called the product rule. And any time you ever have to take the derivative of two things which are multiplied, this is what you have to do. So for example, if you have to uh, take the derivative of let's say x plus five times x squared minus one, what you'll do is you'll take the derivative of the first part, sorry, you'll write the first part, x plus five, derivative of the second part is two x, plus the second part, which is x squared minus one, derivative of the first part is just one. Okay, um, so after that, uh, you're pretty much done. I mean, you can simplify this a little bit, right? You can write it out as like, 2x squared plus 10x plus x squared minus 1, but I don't really see, you can combine them 3x squared or whatever, but this is fine, that's fine. Okay, now what if you have something like this, right? Now what if you have uh, f equals 5 e to the x times x to the fifth? You might be curious, what do you wanna do with the constant? Well, there are two things. Uh, one is you can take the constant and leave it in front, and then just do the product rule on the e to the x and the x to the fifth. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x uh, times the second one, x to the fifth, plus the second one, x, uh, sorry, plus the first one times, I'm like going out of order for my own order, uh, e to the x times derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth. Okay. Another thing you could do is you could like bunch the first two together. So you could say, all right, that's going to be like my first part, and then my second part will be the x to the fifth. So kind of include the 5 e to the x as one of the parts. Okay. So that's the product rule. Don't get too bogged down in simplifying. That's not the important part. Uh, I think the important part is more kind of uh, doing the first derivative of second, second derivative of first, and adding those two together. Okay, uh, the next thing we're gonna learn about is the quotient rule. All right, and here's how the quotient rule works. If you take the derivative of two functions, which for some reason are often written as u of x divided by v of x, uh, what you do, and, and there's a song that goes along with that that I'll link on the website, is you do the low d high times derivative of the high minus high d low, derivative of the low is v prime, square the bottom, so v of x squared, and away we go. So that's the song, low d high minus high d low Square the bottom and away we go. So that's the idea. Now, because this is a subtraction here, uh, it does actually matter. We do need to make sure um, that we're using uh, the correct order on top, unlike the product rule. So let's look at some examples here. Uh, suppose I tell you, you know, y equals x squared plus 5x minus 1 divided by ln of x, and I ask you to find the derivative of y prime. Okay, so we set up the quotient rule. Uh, we do the low, so ln of x, d high, the derivative on top is 2x plus 5, derivative of 1, 0, minus high, d low, derivative of ln x is 1 over x, square the bottom, so we just get the bottom squared, uh, and away we go. You don't want to simplify this any more than I do, so we'll leave our answer like that. Okay, um, now you might be feeling really spicy, right? Be like, cool, can I combine the product and quotient rule into one? And the answer is of course. So this is one with a combo. So suppose I tell you that we have some function uh, x squared plus one divided by x e to the x. Now at its heart, this is a fraction. So we're gonna start this with the quotient rule because that's kind of the overriding structure here. So as we do that, uh, our g prime is gonna be, let's see, low d high. So our low is x e to the x. Low d high, so that's a 2x. Minus high, x squared plus one, d low. Now here's where the product rule is gonna come in. I need to do the derivative of x e to the x. So that's the first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. And then this is all over, square the bottom. Away we go. Okay. 
Again, this got really ugly in a hurry, so you just leave your answer like this, uh, and that's kind of the general setup. Okay, uh, one more thing I wanted to do was kind of do some, some product and quotient rules with like a symbolic f of x or g of x. So suppose I tell you that like y equals g of x times x squared for some g of x, but you don't even have an equation. Now, if you needed to find the derivative of that, your answer is just going to like have a g and a g prime in it. Okay, so when you take the derivative of this, so we have the first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. The derivative of a g we just leave as g prime of x. That's a times right there. Okay, and you'll just leave your answer like that. You don't have an equation for g, so there's nothing to plug in. Um, the only other thing we might see, I might give you a problem like this and tell you, you know, say h equals f of x over g of x. And I may give you some data. I might tell you that, say, f of 2 is 4, f prime of 2 is 7, f, uh, or sorry, g of 2 is 3, g prime of 2 is negative 1. Okay, and I might ask you to find h prime of 2. All right, now, first thing you're going to do, right, is set up the quotient rule. And then, like anything else, after you set up the quotient rule, then you plug in. Okay. So as we take the, the quotient rule, so h prime equals so low d high minus high d low. Square the bottom. Away we go. Okay, so we don't have an equation, so we'll just leave it like that. But now when I want to find h prime at 2, that's just like g of 2, f prime at 2, minus f of 2, g prime at 2, all over g of 2 squared. And g willikers, guys, they gave us all those values right there. So we can just take those chumps and just plug them in. Uh, so g of 2 we know is 3, f prime of 2 is 7, minus f of 2 I think is 4, uh, g prime of 2 is negative 1, divided by g of 2, so that's a 3 squared. So I'm going to end up getting 21 plus 4, so I get 25 ninths. Okay, so that's how you work something like that. You just leave it in terms of g and f, and then when you get kind of these values after you've plugged in, that's where you plug these in for, from the values which are given to you. Okay, so that's how you work with an f and a g. It's nothing special. Uh, we're going to see this a lot throughout the year. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys soon.